What's up everybody? Today I'm going to be making some steampunk style bases for my miniatures. Specifically, I want to make something that looks like the deck of an airship because I'm going to be using these for my zip crew for Malifo. But you could use this idea for Age of Sigmar, War of Hordes, or a ton of other games. Now the first thing I'm going to do is cut out a couple of little discs out of plastic card to fill the hole in these lipped bases. If you're using flat top bases, you can skip this step. But I'm just using a compass to draw a circle and then cut it out to fit inside the hole. And then I can build the base on top of each of these little inserts. You can sand the edges quick to make it fit, but this doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to get covered up anyway. Now I'm going to have a fair amount of variety in these bases, but I also want something that ties them all together. So I decided I'm going to make the deck plating of the airship out of this scale diamond plate. I think it'll look pretty cool as a sort of common element between all the different bases. If you don't have any of this, you can also use something like granny grating or any other texture that you want to be sort of the main flooring across all the bases. So the first thing we're going to do is cut some of the diamond plate out, covering only a portion of the base. I find the easiest way to do this is to glue the pieces down and then trim them down to size, being careful not to cut into the little disc that we're working on top. Of. And then at the border, I'm going to glue on these small pieces of styrene strips. And this is going to be the part that sort of separates the different plates on the deck. Do the same thing with the diamond plate on the other side of the divider, and you've got one basic layout done. For a little bit of variety, we can try doing a four way intersection. So those will kind of be some of your basic layouts. But let's see if we can mix it up a little bit even more. For this one, I want to make it look like one of the deck plates is opened up. So I'm going to start by gluing on some of the edging and then cut out one of the corners and then covering the rest of it with the diamond plate just like we did before. So that when we put it together, there'll be an open spot. Maybe like someone lifted it up to do some repairs and we'll fill it up with some cool stuff later. So you can make a few different variations on those and then let's get started decorating these guys to make them look a little more steampunk. So a few different ideas for what to add to these bases. You can get this pack of cogs and wheels off of Amazon for pretty cheap. They're super useful. I also went to the dollar store and picked up a couple of packs of beads. They can be used to make things like boilers. And you may be able to get a pack of these styrene rods at your local game or hobby store. And they make really good piping for a project like this. Everything else I used here is actually pieces salvaged from old electronics. They can be really great resources for bits for projects like this. So first up, I'm going to take some of the smaller cogs and clockwork bits out of the pack. And I'm going to carefully dip them in white glue and then arrange them inside the opening in the deck until it's pretty full in there to make it look like all sorts of mechanisms that are making the airship run. And after that, I'm just going to start Start taking some of the other bits and gluing them together to look like machines, valves, boilers, pumps, anything you might find on an airship. You can be pretty creative with this, adding pipes in different sections. Right here I cut the top off the lid from my super glue and then glued a gauge on top of it. A good trick that I use is to hit these styrene rods with a heat gun to get them to bend so that it looks like an elbow in the pipe. You can also cut them at an angle and make it look like some sort of exhaust pipe coming up from below decks. And once you have a good amount of bits ready to go, you can start gluing them down to the plating. Be sure to vary up the density a little bit. You want to have some with more parts and some with less. And I even left a few with just the bare deck plating. And when I glued them onto the bases, I mixed in some of the cogs and gears just to give it a little bit more of a steampunk feel. Just don't go too crazy because you do need to save room for where your miniature is going to stand. Now one of these I decided to do something special with. I want to make it look like one of the models is flying over the railing back onto the airship. So I started with a base that's just diamond plate on one side and nothing on the other side. And then I found this part in my bits box that sort of looks like a support for a chain railing that might go around the outside of the ship. So I drilled a couple holes in it and I wanted to use this small gauge chain and make it sort of hover in the air. It looked like it would connect to another railing in a different part of the ship. But this part was cut out of the scene. But unfortunately the chain didn't take glue very well. So I took some thin gauge wire and fed it through a few of the links to give the chain a little bit of support. Support. I stuck the chains through the hole in the support and then shaped it to make it look like it was sort of sagging. Honestly, this was a real pain in the butt to do, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So once you have everything assembled and decorated the way you like, the next step is to prime it all. Trust me, this plastic card stuff does not take paint well unless you prime it. After that, we're going to give everything a base coat in a metallic silver. You'll probably want to do multiple coats of a lot of these base coats, especially in the big flat areas where you might be able to see the brush strokes. And then I'm going to go back through and hit a few things with different metallic colors. I primarily did gold for the cogs and copper and bronze for different pipes and boilers just to give a little bit of contrast. And I did the railing in gold just to make it stand out that little bit more. After that, you can hit everything with a black wash. If you want this to look a little bit greasier and dirtier, you can go a little heavier on the wash. If you want it to look a little bit neater and clean, you can go lighter on the wash or just wash specific areas. I decided to go with something in the middle. And then once the wash dries, I'd recommend going back and dry brushing everything with the base color just to bring back a little bit of that shine as the black wash will kind of make everything look very matte. Anywhere where you think exhaust might be coming out, you can go in and dry brush some black on the tips to make it look like some carbon buildup from the smoke coming through. And at this point, I went back to the railing base and painted in the flat area blue so that it'll look like the sky or the ocean over the edge of the airship. And finally, once you're happy with your paint job, don't forget the most important step, and that is to black the lip of the bases so that everything looks nice and neat. This is what they look like all built and painted. And after that, we can go ahead and attach our minis to the bases. 
I don't know about you, but this is my favorite step, and it's where everything really comes together. And now one final thing, on the railing base, I took a cotton ball and tore it up a little bit, stretching some of the fibers out, and then I glued it into the hollow on the base so that it looks like clouds, with just a little bit of the blue sky poking through. And those are my steampunk airship bases. I don't know about you, but making bases is one of my favorite parts of the hobby. It's not quite as tedious as painting, but it still scratches that creative itch, and you can do some really cool things with it. Plus, it adds a lot to the final look of the miniature. If you're currently just doing dirt bases, I highly encourage you to try something a little more complicated. It can be rewarding. But anyway, drop me a comment below if you think you use this idea for your own bases, or if you have any ideas for ways you could add to it. And let me know if you'd like to see me do more videos like this. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.